Hey, today we're going to take a look into the near future and learn a little bit about the exciting science of photonics. Photonics is amazing! It sure is! Whoa, you're me! I sure am! You're a hologram! That's right, holograms are made using photonics. You're made of light! <laughs> that tickles! Yes, I'm made of light, and light is made of photons, which have no mass, which is why you're able to put your hand right through me. You're like a representation of me, not actual me. I feel like I'm in Tron. You're not. But photonics is something straight out of science fiction. I mean, it's so complicated. You have Maybe to... you, I, we should let Dr. Greer and Dr. Chaikin explain. Good idea. Take it away, Dr. Greer. Almost all of our high tech is based on controlling the flow of electrons. So electrons are tiny subatomic particles that carry charge, uh, electric charge. The way a circuit works, the way your computer works, is electrons go from here to there, or from there to there. What if you replace them with uh, the tiny particles of light that are called photons? Photons! Photons are tiny particles that make up light. There are trillions hitting your eye from this screen right now. They come from the sun, light bulbs, even laser pointers. Wow, there you are, Mr. Dot. Prepare to die. <laughs> That's photons in action, and so am I. Exactly, and photons move at the speed of light, so they're really, really fast. They can go around the Earth eight times in a second. I got you this coffee. I brought you this cookie, which I baked. Well, I just got you some Thai food. From Thailand, am I faster, what? Oh, thanks, but um, I don't really like bad Thai. Well, what about Mexican? I could go to Cabo. Photons are pretty helpful and can carry a lot of information, but they're a little crazy, so scientists like Dr. Greer and Dr. Chaikin are trying to find ways to harness their power. What would really be cool is if you could put light inside here and it couldn't get out. If you can't get out, um, then you make a hole in the middle of it to go from one place to the other, and the light will go from one place to another. And that means you've got an elementary circuit. Then you could make a little computer which doesn't dissipate as much energy, which doesn't heat up as much, which all works by light. So you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to plug in your computer. All you have to do is shine a light on it, <laughs> and it would start to work. It's working! And look, I'm even getting a 10. So you have to imagine this shrunk down by a factor of a million, okay? So now imagine that all of Manhattan is filled with this, okay? Um, and now what we do is we drill holes in it, okay? And we drill a hole like that, and then we drill a hole over to the side, and we put something in the middle that makes the light only go around that corner, like the streets. We make it so that when the light goes down one street, it keeps going down that street until we switch it to another street, and we switch it to another street. Oh, come on, I walk faster than this! No, 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 cross down! Why are we going cross down? Oh, it's a good thing photons don't have stomachs, because I'd be hurling! Oh. Beams of light can pass through each other without messing each other up, but electric currents can't. So if you try to pass one wire through another, the electricity passing through one wire will get mixed up with the electricity passing through the other wire. So you have to avoid that by having one wire pass over the other or by uh, have it pass under. If you want to make two beams of light cross, we're headed for that photon! We're all gonna crash! Ah! You can just pass one right through the other and it doesn't mess anything up. <laughs> and then we take it back uptown, so it takes the signal we sent them here, and sometime later it shows up at 42nd Street and tells photons where they are, they should turn a switch on. Turn it on! Amazing! We did it! Wait, is that cat trying to eat photons? Ah! I know a small digitized version of me. Photonics could be the future of technology. Oh yes, but there's a lot of research left to be done. Dr. Greer's lab is working on using photonics not just to drive your cat crazy, but to actually move things around on a cellular level. Check it out. We use the forces exerted by computer-generated holograms to reach out and grab these microscopic building blocks. If you are a Star Wars fan, we're using the same kind of holograms as, as you know, help me, Obi-Wan. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. I am your father. 
Well, that's not right. It's like that, for real. And only we're not just looking at it, we're using it to move things and to, and to put them in the right place. What you're seeing here are, are three tiny little particles. Each one is about 1% the diameter of a human hair. And what I can do is reach over here and turn on an optical trap and grab the particle. You can see the other two particles here are wandering around randomly. They're, they're just floating around in the water. This one isn't, because this one's, this one's locked into an optical trap. I think that if I didn't actually have these things in my lab, I'm not sure that I would believe it would be possible to, to actually reach out with a beam of light, grab a thing, hold on to it, and move it in three dimensions with, just, with nothing but light. It's like magic, uh, but it's not, it's physics. Boom! Physics is better than magic because it's actually real. Eat that, Harry Potter. Don't diss my Harry. Magic is actually an ancient tradition that has been celebrated for many of years. I mean, Harry what? Houdini. Ah, oh, that's much better. Let me tell you something that you never thought about. Put your life onto four wheels and start to roam about.